morning church let's get ready to worship amen
welcome in this place above all Lord God we just want your presence here Lord this service means nothing without your presence God this church is nothing without your presence Lord and we just want you this morning God have your way in us Father we have seen no way you move Full of goodness, full of mercy. We can never get enough. Oh, God of grace, great God of love.
present in every season, Lord. We trade in our weight of heaviness this morning, God.
with you this morning. He just wants to sit with you and just love you this morning. with Jesse and Bronski and we were kind of just talking and then we were just I don't know and Dave was there and then we just started talking about an eclipse messing around and then we were just talking about an, how when an eclipse right it covers the sun because we're talking about Sunday and we're talking about how the eclipse covers the sun but yet you know it's dark but yet we can still see and a lot of times we don't we don't understand, we don't see that we're walking in darkness because we can see. And then we kind of shifted and we said, sometimes our heart can be eclipsed. Amen, it's like we're walking away, but we, we don't see the hurt, we don't see the hardship, we don't things that are eclipsing the love of Christ. We don't see that it's blocking the joy of the Lord. And, and then as, as I was thinking about that this morning, as, as I was worshiping, the scripture came and says, I knock on the door. It says this morning, he's knocking on the door of your heart. He wants to come in and sit with you. He wants to come in and dine with you. He wants to encourage you this morning. He wants to help you with whatever need that you have this morning. Whatever it is that you're going through this morning, he wants to lift you up. He wants to give you all that you need this morning so that you can continue to press on for the things that he has for your life. There's nothing but blessings in front of you that he has for you. There's nothing but good times for you that he has, no matter how dark it seems right now. No matter how dark it feels like you're walking right now, he says, I have good times for you this morning. But you've got to open the door. And then I began to see this door. I'm thinking of a hallway when I look down, down the hallway to my kids' rooms. I know when they're up because their light is on and I can see the light shining underneath the, the doors. I can like, see the light shining from the sides and I know they're up. And so at that time I know I can go over there, knock on their door and give them their kids good night. And I think that's what's happening here is that, that, that door that we need to open is just so bright and, and that's Jesus on the other side. And he's knocking because he wants to come in and just give you a kiss this morning. He just wants to love you this morning. Let's open that door this morning, amen. Lift your hands as a sign of the door just flinging open, amen. Lift your hands, say, God, I'm here this morning. Speak to me this morning, God. I need to hear your voice this morning. I need to be encouraged this morning. I need to be loved this morning. I need to be picked up this morning. I need to be helped this morning. It's been a hard week. There has been so much that has gone on this week. That I've made so many mistakes this week, God. So I need you to let me know that it's okay. I need you to tell me that it's all right. I just need you to put your arms around me and hold me and encourage me and tell me that I've got everything under control. I've, I knew that this day was coming. I knew that you were going to be in this situation. I knew that you were going to be going through this. I knew that you were going to be feeling this way. And so because I knew, I knew that I was going to be here this morning as you opened your door so that I could just love you and embrace you and encourage you and give you all that you need this morning. I want to equip you with all that you will need to get through this week, to get through this day. And tomorrow when you wake up, he says, I will do it all over. I love that song that says he will do it again because tomorrow he will do it again. 
And no matter what you're going through, if you feel you're in the same situation, when you wake up on Monday, he will do it again. When you wake up on Tuesday, he will strengthen you again. When you wake up on Wednesday, he will strengthen you again. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he will strengthen you. Amen. And one day you're going to look and you're going to see that the strength that he has given you has got you through. And you can be able to look back and just smile and say, man, it wasn't as bad as I thought. God, we thank you this morning. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, uh, we have, yesterday we had uh, uh, a little, um, what is it, a marriage, kind of like a marriage watch party. And uh, it was amazing. Ralph and Letty are going to come up as we give our offerings and, and share a little bit about that. Amen. So, uh, you can give all kinds of different ways. We have text to give. You can go on the Church Center app. Uh, the Church Center app is where we have all our information. That's where we have everything that's going on. If you, do not, uh, if you don't have that downloaded, download it so you can see what's going on. You could also give online. Amen. And then uh, we have the offering basket over here in, in the back today. So um, everything is back there. You can just walk back there, grab your thing, and, uh, you know, and give that way. So, Ralph, let you guys want to come up and just share a little bit about yesterday. morning, church. Um, you know, it's always good to invest in your marriage. It's, I mean, I, I think it's very important. When we first got saved, um, we met each other on drugs. <laughs> so after, after I went to prison and I came out, we were sober. Um, didn't know how that was going to work. Never lived together, never been with each other sober. But, you know, but with the word of God and getting saved, you know, we, we've learned. And, um, you know, and then we end up raising her two nieces, and that was, you know, wasn't expected. But I, what I learned yesterday was uh, seasons. We all go through seasons. You know, we raised the girls. We um, moved on. It's like, okay, what do we do now? She was, spends a lot of time with the girls. I always worked. And what we learned yesterday was about, see, you know, for me, what I learned is our lives, we go through seasons. Pretty soon, you know, I don't know when I'll grab uh, – I graduate, but, you know, my wife's in school, so that was a change for me now that she studies so much, and, but like I said, the marriage thing was good. I, I always encourage marriage couples to do seminars and to, I mean, to go to seminars and to do marriage, uh, marriage things, but, you know, it, it was, it was good. I, I just, you know, encourage you next time we have something like that. We want to do promote stuff like that. Um, we are going to go back to doing a monthly date night for couples. So, you know, we want to encourage you to come. We had fun, um, you know, but I'll let my wife speak a little bit. But, yeah, we do go through changes. You think we know it all, but we don't, you know. Um, I thought by just getting saved, she'd be happy. Well, yeah, that's, that's the good part. I thought um, by working, that's another good part. But I always thought by buying her stuff would make her happy. But you know what? It's not just all the material things. It's not more, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just listening to what your wife or your spouse has to say. That's the most important thing. You, money can't buy the world, but it's just that, just hearing what, you know, either spouse is going through or whatever, it's, it's, that's the most important thing and being there for your spouse. Hi, guys. Um, I want to go back on what he said, the seasons, when, you know, when he was talking about, somebody had asked a question about, um, when your kids leave. And when we were raising the girls, that was, uh, I, I was talking to him, and I think I was talking to Corey about it too. You know, it's a shock because you have your kids there with you all the time. So the girls took up the majority of the time, and so he was able to work later than normal, you know, nine to five stuff. And so when he would say, oh, I'm staying late after work. I have to go do this. I have to go do that. Okay, fine. Me and the girls will just go get something to eat. You know, we'll go to the stores or whatever. And um, after they had left the house, it was like, okay, I'm calling. When are you coming home? When are you coming home? You know, it's not just an adjustment. I, like <laughs> I do. I tell them, when are you coming home? It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> um, it's not just like, the woman making the adjustments, but it's the man making the adjustments as well, you know, because we get into a routine of just doing our own thing during the day and then meeting up at night for dinner or whatever. But um, 
I just encourage you guys, you know, if you want to get together with us just to hang out, you want to just sit and talk, you know, just to get out of your routine or to pick our brain or anything, just fellowship, just, you know, give us a call, hit us up. Um, we're here for you guys for whatever you need, even if, even if it's just for prayer. We're here for you guys. So, yeah, hopefully we have a, we're looking into doing a marriage conference sometime soon. Um, so pray on that with us, that God opens doors, you know, for just the right place, the right time, the right event, everything. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right. And all I know, what I got out of that, this is, is like a subliminal message is buy your wife stuff. <laughs> oh, Lord. My anniversary is coming up. Uh, End of, end of September, and yeah, I know I'm going to pay for that one. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Man, God's good, amen? God's, God's good. You guys had a good week? Yeah, yeah. I've, um, I've had, a, I had an amazing week. Um, my baby just turned two on Friday, so that's a big, that's a big whoop-de-doo. Um, it's crazy because, you know, he's, he's two now, but he acts like he's 12 wants everything. I mean, he's, I'm like, man, he's going to be a prodigy because it's, you know, the terrible twos. He started that like six months ago. So I was like, man, this kid's ahead of his time. But, um, you know, God, you know, we've been, we've been so blessed to have um, uh, this, 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 uh, this month we're talking about truth and error. And it's, uh, it's very important because there's a, there's a lot of things happening in our, in our, in our world that uh, get watered down or get twisted or confused and it becomes logical, right? It becomes logical. It becomes, well, that makes sense. That, 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 that's the way to do things. And, you know, there's, you know, there's a, I, I have a lot of, you know, friends who don't serve the Lord that, you know, they believe other, you know, other things. And, you know, to them, they're just saying, you know, like they, they don't believe in an afterlife. To them, it's, it, it is what it is. You know, they're like plants. They, you know, they, they pop up, they go back to the ground, and that's it. Like there's no, 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 no purpose, right? And then I have, other friends who believe in other things and, you know, but it's, it's crazy that how people can just believe that you're one of billions of people on this earth and yet you have no purpose beyond just what's happening here, this temporary life. You know, so they, they, they think they're, you know, they live it up, YOLO, you know, all this stuff and, and they, they, they do all these things with and thinking that that's it. You know, this, this is this is all we have, and 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 it couldn't be any more wrong. That's operating in error. Truth is, you have destiny. You have destiny. The and 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 the truth is that God has destiny, not for some. It's another thing the churches get wrong. They believe, you know, that you know, there's a lot of churches that preach that you know, God. God only elects the, 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 the few or whatever, and everybody else is destined to go to hell. That's not, that's not what the, 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 the word of God says. It's that God has a destiny for everyone. And I know we don't know everything. We don't know the, the days of the kingdom age, where, what even some biblical scholars might even say that what that is, or, or, or what eternity looks like, because we're obviously we're not, we're not there. We're still here. But we know that God is doing something. And in 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see it face to face. See, this is all like a mirror. We don't see all of it. You know, we, we don't see all of it. It's like if you're driving, you know, your rear view mirror can only show you so much of what's behind you. You don't get a clear picture till you're fully about face and facing that way and you can see everything. So we just get a glimpse, amen, we get a glimpse. But, you know, all the confusion that's been going on, all the things that people say about life and, you know, we, what is the purpose of life and all this stuff or whatever, the biblical truth today is that I have a destiny because I am a child of God. That is the biblical truth today. That's what, that's what we're going to hit on. You know, destiny is something to which a, uh, a person or a thing is destined to right? It is de a determined course of events. Certain things that happen 
to people predetermined by course of events. Just imagine, you guys ever been, I don't know, have you guys ever seen like a symphony or orchestra? Have you ever been to like an opera or, or been to like a show? You know, this, this is whole band. You know, we're talking 30 musicians and they have one conductor, a guy with a little stick, moving the tempo of the song and, 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 and coursing. That's how we are. You got God who's the conductor. Moving everything. He knows. He knows the notes. He knows, what's, he knows everything. He knows the, the, the cadence, the beat, the rhythm. All our job is to do is to stay within those notes. Not to stray from our path. No, no unexpected solo, you know, no, no off-key flute, whatever. We, we are. We are part of an orchestra. Every one of us plays an important part. But when we're in unison, when we listen to the master conductor, we, we, we're supposed to operate the way we're supposed to operate. And when you stray from that, you miss out. See, destiny is drawing various pieces of your life, and it puts it together. And why is things happening? Why, is, why, are, why are things happening in your life the way you are? Um, you know, some might, some might be going through a rough time here. Some of you guys might be having a great time. But it's for such a time as this. We hear that often, and we'll, we'll dive into it. But the biblical truth of destiny is this. We, we always make it seem, well, God has a plan for you. God does have a plan for you. That's biblical error, though. Biblical truth is that God has a plan for you, but it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the world around you. And you being ready to meet those needs. You being ready to seize those opportunities. You being ready to witness to the people that God has predetermined to put in your path. See, we make, we, we, because we, it's, it's, just, it's just common sense, right? Everywhere we go, it's about us. Or, you know, like, it's about us. Everything's, we're, we're tailored to everything about us, you know. We, we can pick up an app. It's about us. It's about my profile, my settings, my, my things. It's about me. You can go anywhere. It's, it's me, 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 me. But in the kingdom, it's about you so that you can tend to the other people around you. That's destiny. Well, how can that be? Well, I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take you. Old school to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1 says this. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See that I have this day that I set, over you, set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. See, the first thing I want to get to is that biblical truth of a personal de destiny. There's rich words. When God speaks, it's rich. It's not poverty things he tells you. It's not things that have no value. When God speaks to you, it's rich. You are a rich person when you hear the, the word of the Lord, the, the, the voice of the Lord speak to you. And check this out. In Jeremiah, he says, before you were born, I ordained you a prophet. That's destiny. There's a plan for your life. God has a plan. Not your plan. God has his plan. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to repeat a lot of things, so I want us to get this. God has a plan, and it's not your plan. It's his plan. And back to biblical destiny. Biblical destiny is this. It's ordained. It's established. It's foreordained. That's the difference. Ordained means it's sent forth. Foreordained means it's a godly position. It only comes from something supernatural. Foreordained. It's appointed. It's beforehand. It's predestined. God has handcrafted a blueprint for your life. Everybody here has an individual blueprint. How many of you guys live in a home? Raise your hands. 
How many of you guys been to somebody else's house in this church? Does your house look like their house? Why? Because it's specific to tailored to that person's, right, how they like it. It's the same way. Pastor Lou's life is not my life. He has his own blue, specific blueprint that God has given him for him. Same thing with you, Sister Claudia. You have your own specific life that God has created. See, God specifically and wonderfully makes and blueprints your life individually. But we water it down when we compare ourselves to someone else. God didn't make me to be like somebody else. He made me. And I'm okay with that. Are you okay with you being you? That's the problem. Ephesians 1.11 says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Again, God gives us an inheritance according to his purpose, that he works all things according to the counsel of his will. Our life is surrendered, and, and, and our, we can only get a rich life when we lay down our calling, our purpose, our things to do his will. 2 Timothy 1.9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? There you go, guys. Everyone here has been saved and called with a holy calling. It's not just a calling. It's not like some, like, you know, you know, see those farmer competitions where they're, like, pig squealing and calling, you know, zoo they're, they're, call, they're calling, like, pigs and stuff. It's not just a calling. It's not just your mom yelling at you when you're at the park from down the street, like, come home, dinner. It's not any of that stuff. It's a specific calling. And it says, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time, time began. Paul's, tell, Paul's literally saying that our purpose was predetermined before anything else existed. Before time itself. So everyone here in this room, God has made a purpose before anything else took place. Before he spoke the light and light was created. Before he, he with the symphony conducted and the ocean was made. Before the, you know... Pangea or whatever you learn in school, plateau, the plates, and all these things start, mountains, all that stuff came second. He already had a specific plan and purpose for everybody here in 2021 before time itself began. That's an amazing God. God sees the beginning and he sees the end of time and he sees it looking down through time and then he sees you right now, right here. This Sunday, he sees you where you're at. That's an amazing feat an amazing thing that God cares that much that there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of things going on in Afghanistan and he has his eye on that but he also has his eye on you that's an amazing feat Ephesians 1 4 just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love so why do we live a life why do we live a Christian life guys class why do we live a life because he wants us to live a life full of power not to walk in fear, not to be full of spiritual weakness. He wants us to live a life full of power. God tells Jeremiah, I know you. I know you, and I've set you apart, and I have pointed you. Remember, this is all coming from him, not from Jeremiah. God says that I have specifically made plans for you. And those plans, those specific plans that God has made is called destiny. Everyone here has destiny. Let's take a look at Samson. Before he was born, an angel appeared to his mother. And the angel gave her all this info that you're going to have a son. He's going to be strong. He's going to be mighty. He's going to be a priest. He's going to be a, a, a judge. And he has a mission. And he's ordained. He, and the angel says, he's ordained from God. And yet Samson wasn't even thought of. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't even existing in the physical form. But God knew that before he was even born. Or how about John the Baptist? 700 years, guys, 700 years before he was even born, the prophet Isaiah said there would be one in the wilderness crying. 700 years, the, 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 uh, the prophet uh, uh, Isaiah uh, prophesied of that. Why? Because God spoke to Isaiah, and God told, God told Isaiah, there's going to be a, a great prophet that comes before the Messiah 
And then 700 years later, God speaks to John the Baptist's mother. And he says that, and he tells her that he's going to be a Nazarite. A very specific type of person. And before he was even born, he tells her that he has a specific mission. That he has a plan. That there's a grand design. There's a blueprint I made just for him. So you think, you think that God cares so much that he tells and he reveals these things that, that don't, haven't even happened yet. He cares that much. What do you think, if God can speak that to somebody, what do you think God is speaking to you this morning? But are we listening? Are we aware? Are we, do we know what God is doing? Do we know the plans and the purposes he has for our life? Or are we just existing? Can you be, can you imagine, can you be spiritually filled, but you can also be spiritually immature? That's, that's the question. Uh, do, do we have the spiritual maturity to know that I have a destiny, you have a destiny, God's ordained you, God has a plan for you, and his plan for you is to, be su to succeed in his will, not your will, and he has specific things that he has in line for you, but what are those things? What is God telling you? Are we listening this morning? The problem is that we don't know what destiny looks like. We think it's a magic moment. This magic moment. But we don't know that destiny happens in steps. Destiny happens in steps. It is a series, a series of moments that happen. It's not the lottery. Your life is not the lottery. You are not a big bang theory. Just boom, it just, it's happened. No, it's a series of things that happen that make you who you are. There's no magic pill to make you who you are. Nothing happens by magic. It only happens by process. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. It doesn't say the, the steps of a, you know, of an of a ignorant man. It doesn't say the steps of a bad man. Or a, or a foolish man it says the steps of a good man, of a good person, are ordered by the Lord. See, you did not get where you're at. You are not you because of one situation that happened in your life. Amen? You can play yourself, but you can't play me. Right? You're you because of things that have happened in your life. Whether it's positive or negative, the steps that, the steps that you have taken have brought you here where you are right now in your life. And there's no one else you can blame, whether good or bad. But when you meet Jesus and you know the plans that he has for you and you know the purpose and you know the will that he has for you, he says this, yeah, I know the steps have brought you here, but I also know the steps that it's going to require you to get you where you need to be. See, a lot of the times we think, Making these steps, making a conscious decision to say, I'm going to follow the Lord. And you come to the altar and you lay your life down and that's it. And you think, well, I, I made it. I've made it. I made it to the altar, guys. Whoopie-doo, I made it. I'm saved. But then Jesus goes, get up, turn around and walk. What are we walking to? Jesus does not call you to come up here and stay the way you are. There's more to that. There's, can you imagine there's more to than just an altar call? Can you imagine that there's more that, to, to the, what God has for you than just a Sunday morning? Uh, uh, it, there's more. So God knows the process. So, and with destiny comes process. And Elijah is a good example of that. You know, I'm, I won't get into all of all Elijah, but there's a part in, in 2 Kings chapter 2 where Elijah, his mentor, Elijah, is going into a, a, a place called Bethel, and Elijah's coming after him. And then Elijah gets, I don't know if he gets irritated or he's just cautious, but he tells him, hey, Elijah, stay here, stay here, don't follow me, you know, I, 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 I have to go over here. And um, Elijah says, nah, I'm not having it. Nah, you're tweaking, right? Like, I'm, as the, he says, as the Lord lives, 
And as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So Elijah follows him. And they go to Bethel. And, start, and then when he gets to Bethel, there's some prophets there and some, the sons of the prophets and um, are priests. And they tell him, hey, man, don't you know your master's going to leave you? And then Elijah says, yeah, yeah, I know he's going to leave me, but hush up. And then there's another town that happens. So God tells Elijah, go to that town. So he, Elijah tells Elijah, hey, yo, stay here. Don't follow me again. Stay here. And, he, and Elijah tells him, as long as I live and as long as you live, I'm going to shadow you. I'm going to follow you. And he follows him. And they go into an, a Jericho. And then it happens the third time. And Elijah tells him, calmate, stay right here. Do not follow me. And we all know his response. Hey, yeah, I've heard it. I'm still going to follow you. As long as you're alive and as long as my soul lives, I'm going to follow. And he follows him. See, there's a process and there's a journey. But the choices that, the choices that we make are the key to life. Are the key to life. Elijah could have easily stayed where he was at. But he knew there was a greater purpose of where he needed to be. Sometimes we think because, you know, of, of, of situations, you know, some, some of us might be having marriage issues or we might be having kid issues or financial issues or, or spiritual issues. And those things are telling us to stay back. You know, it's not like that. God is, maybe God's telling you, no, nah, man, keep going. There's more for you out there. There's, there's greater for you. There's a process out there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that when God told Abraham, go to a land that, and I will show it to you. No, no follow-up instru no follow instructions. He just said, go. And without hesitation, this Bible tells us that Abram, Abraham then, like, tells Says, tells his wife, get your backpack. Not get your, we're allowed to let these not here. Not get your 12 leggages. He says, get your bag and let's go. Let's get on, let's get on this Camel 500 and we're going to go. And she goes, where are we going? And he goes, I don't know. No GPS, right? Like, and they trusted the Lord and God did amazing things to them. How about Moses? Exodus 25, 9 tells us, according to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the furnishings, so you shall make it. He gives Moses an instructions to make the Ark of the, or the, 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 Ark of the Covenant. He makes all the instructions to put the, the, the They've never seen this before. But he, he, God gives them exactly the, the specific things to do. He ordains them to do, and he does it to a T. He follows everything to a T to this day. Because of that, Jews live the way they live. It's a process. They follow it to a T. Or how about King David? You know, when it, when it comes to pass, passing on the mantle, in 1 Chronicles uh, 20, 11 and 12, it says, Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the, best, for the uh, vestibule, its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, the place of the mercy seat, and the plans, the plans to all they had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and all the chambers all around, and all the treasuries of the house of God, and all the treasuries that are uh, the dedicated things. He, he gives God, David gives Solomon the plans to build, the, like, you know, fill the temple. Specific plans. And Solomon completes that. See, when God speaks to you, it's not just a generic thing. You know, I'm, I might be like, hey, you know, Pastor Al, how's your day going? And he's like, oh, my day's good, you know, crazy tenants, you know, all this stuff or whatever. Like, oh, man, it's crazy. And it's just small talk. There is no small talk when, you, when Jesus is talking to you. There's only small listening, small receiving. Everything Jesus has for you is huge. Everything when God speaks to you, it's not temporary. It's not, uh, it's, it's not just something that just comes in one ear and not the other, but we treat it. Because we're so used to having cheap communication, poor relationships with each other. And this is Christian people, poor relationships. So because of that, we treat the Father like that. And it's not like that. When God speaks, he speaks. How about this? How about when God tells Noah to build a giant boat? There's never been a boat. There's never even rained. They don't even, I don't know the dude knows what a big ocean of body of water is, but he tells us specifically, you will make yourself an ark out of gopher wood. You guys don't even know there's gopher wood? And he says, make rooms on the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. 
It's width, 50 cubits. It's height, 30 cubits. It precisely tells them what to build. And it took them a long time. But did Noah quit? Obviously he didn't. He trusted the process. He went through it. Why? Because God gave him a specific blueprint. He gave him the, uh, a specific plan that only Noah can fulfill. God is giving you guys and handing you guys, every person here, there's a blueprint literally right in front of you. I can't do that for you. It's yours. It's specifically just yours. And are we going to trust the process? I don't know if that blueprint's going to be an easy walk up, you know, easy walk in the park, or if it's going to be a grueling hike. But either way, you have to trust it. You have to trust it. For God has given to you, and only specifically for you. No one else can do it for you. That's the process of destiny. If you don't go through the process to get it, you won't have the power to keep it. If you don't go through the process to get it, God's not going to bless you with it to keep it. There's no shortcuts. There's no magic code. There's no cheat codes. Nothing. You cannot mess with this. You can get there quickly. And I've I seen this happen. How, how many times have we see people who have not were called or not mature enough to handle something and they get their... Because I ordained you to do it. My responsibility, guys, my responsibility is when I think I can't do it, it doesn't matter if I think I can't do it. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what he's ordained. And my responsibility is to rise up to the this, to this specific plan that God has and seize that opportunity. That's what we're called to do, to rise up and seize our destiny. Jeremiah, once, uh, one, again, 178 says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. God is telling, telling Jeremiah, it doesn't matter, like the rock says. God is with me. This morning, do you have the confidence to whatever's, whatever's laying in front of you to say, God is with me. God is with me. And the crazy thing, the crazy thing about this is the faithfulness of Jesus is so amazing is that when he's with you, he goes with you. He doesn't stay back. He's like Elijah. He says, no, nah, bro, you're tweaking. I'm going to go with you. I'm going with you. And the biblical truth is understanding that we do not choose our destiny. That's another messed up thing is that, oh, we choose what we are. Man, it's not Mortal Kombat. You don't choose the path you go. Test your might. This is straight up. We don't choose our destiny. We only choose whether we accept it or reject it. God has laying a plan for your life this morning. God has a specific calling for your life sitting literally at your hand, on your lap, at your hands, right there. And we have the ability to say, God, I will embrace this or I will throw it away. If you want to rise up and grab it, go for it because it belongs to you. And why it belongs to you? Because the Lord ordained it. God has given it to you. God has a plan for your life, and you choose if it's yours or not. Philippians 3.12 and 14 says, not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of which, uh, of that for which uh, Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal uh, for the prize and the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, we all know Paul, the apostle. He was a missionary. He was an evangelist. Mir miracles galore he did in many things. He went to close countries. He, you know, he, he, he did a lot of damage for the kingdom in a good way. But yet, he says, out of all those things, the humility in Paul, he says, but I haven't even arrived yet. <laughs> how, I don't even know how many churches he's planted by then, how many people he led to the Lord, how many 
crusades in the street that he, he won, how many uh, God used him in miraculous ways. I, I, I can't even keep count by the time he wrote Philippians how many things he, he did. But he says, all those things, I'm not even there yet. Can you imagine Paul saying, he, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, I'm not even there yet. I haven't even arrived yet. And it's crazy that I want to live my life like that. All the things that I've done in my life so far in my soon-to-be 40 years in my, in my life, all those things, all the good things, I've, amazing things I've done for the kingdom, but, and to still say, I haven't arrived yet. I want to discover what, G, what Jesus' calling is for my life, guys. This is my purpose in my life. I want to discover what the calling is and what he has for me. And I want to be that person that's responsible, that's spiritually mature to take hold of that and to fulfill that to the, to the T for his purpose and for his will. I know God has called me to be a pastor. I know God has called me into ministry. Why? Because it's not about me. I don't, this is not all fun and dandy, guys. I deal with a lot of jacked up people and a lot of good people. But I know that God, the calling God has in my life is not for me. It's to bless those around me because he uses someone as wretched as me. He uses me. This is, the, this is the kind of call we have. This is what it is. God, God's destiny is good for you. Not bad. God's destiny is good for you. First, get the worship team to come up here. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says this. But as it is written, no, an eye has not seen nor an ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has a glorious plan for you. And that plan is so huge. It is beyond your human understanding. It is beyond our understanding. But the one thing that we can't contextualize intellectually, we understand spiritually. And that is in order to try to, try to, try to understand it, it will drive you nuts. But if you activate it, if you trust the Lord, and as you go through the process, God will start revealing what that plan was a long time ago. You know, who, like, who would have known? Who would have known back in, oh, man, what, 2000, 2002 or whatever, when I was trying to commit suicide? Who would have known? As I was bleeding myself to death, as, as, as I didn't even care to want to, I didn't want to be here. But who would have known that God took that pathetic moment in my life? And that's what changed my life. Like, God intervened. God intervened, and, and, and I thought, well, it's, my life is temporary. It's, 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 it's just, it, it's, it's worthless. It comes and goes. But God took my, 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 my feeble understanding and my, and, 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 my, and, my, and my ignorance. He took that, and he turned my ignorance into a blessing. And he, and he, and he took my, my death. He turned my death into life. This is what he does. This is what he does to all of us. He offers this. And man, I'm going to use Lou's favorite, ver favorite, favorite verse, I think. Come on. Jeremiah 29, 11, guys. This is it right here. This is it. I'm, this is my staple where I'm going to lay this down. For I, know the, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. This is why we have destiny, guys. Most people do not believe in, maybe, maybe this might be you. You probably believe that God doesn't like you. There's lots of people that I know, lots of Christian friends that I know that God, think, they think that God doesn't like them. Why? Because they try to buy their way into heaven. They try to be busy. They try to do everything as possible. Like, you know, they're, they're, like, they're like almost like, like Martha in the kitchen. They're just always toiling, always toiling. And God's not calling us to do a bunch of things. God's calling us to do a specific thing. A specific thing. And we're trying, to, we're, we get busy trying to earn God's love. And, 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 and the harder we work, the harder we work, we try to earn his favor, we mess it up. We mess it up. And we think that, oh man, why is God, God doing all these things to me? Why is God putting me in this situation? Why is, why is this happening to my life? Why is this happening to my family members? Why, why, why are all these things happening in my life? God's not trying to hurt you. It's not even in his DNA. It's not even in his, I don't even know what he has. Like his DNA, like, 
like it's not even who he is so if you have those thoughts this morning I'm encouraging you to delete those things because it says right here the thoughts God gives the thoughts of peace not evil if you're if you have godly thoughts if you have godly thinking you're gonna think in peace you're not gonna make rash decisions you're not gonna say harmful things to your spouse you're not gonna say harmful things to your kids you're not gonna ruin ruin your testimony your witnessing because of your attitude because of your stinking thinking right we must elevate our attitude right our attitude needs altitude we must get up there we have to we, we have to come toward what is what God has for us and to stay away from evil and, and it's crazy that that sometimes we think like man I, I'm just if I just do this if I just pray this much and read my Bible so many things that God 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 will God will love me it's not like that blockage right now this morning and you know that the Lord is speaking to you and God is speaking to you God's trying to break through these barriers and, and he's trying to break through and he's trying to say you know what these these things that are hindering you I want to I want to not just replace them because he told Jeremiah that I'm going to give you something that you can destroy and you can and you, and you can throw away and he also tells them that I'm going to give you something that you can plant and it will grow God is going to God wants to come into your mind right now, rip things off and throw them away. And he's going to plant stuff in your mind and it's going to grow. And it's going to grow this morning. It's going to grow. And it's going to delete all those things. God's seen it before. Adam thought evil thoughts. Mind you, this is a man that literally walked with God in the garden. But once sin came into his life, thought God doesn't like me anymore and he Bible tells us that he hid and then he and then afterwards he was resentful you know and then his kids you know came like hate came out of all those because you 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 God has a, a destiny and you, and you start choosing things you start thinking a certain way but God's not God's not like that God doesn't want us to do things out of out of not thinking of not out of not being uh, and, and, uh, and being, you know, having an intellectual, an intellectual, uh, uh, you know, uh, correct thinking to just or, or, or to say things just because we say things like it's not auto response. If someone makes us angry, our auto response is to get angry. God doesn't want us to work like that. We're not a drone. We're not ro these robots. We're not pre-programmed to, you know do these things out of the flesh it's not like that we have to change those things God has put you here for a blessing destiny is that God assumes a responsibility check this out God assumes a responsibility of drawing you and setting up the elements around you at the right place at the right time and you just walk right into it God does everything else God does everything else you just walk into it Romans 8 28 we all know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. You know, we go through all these things. Can you, I, I, I can still imagine that. The death of my brother, the death of my sister, my depression, my suicide, my, my salvation, my, my ordainship, my, my being a father, being a husband, and, 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 and you know, and, and being part of the, the pastorship. All those things, good, bad, ugly, blessed, all those things work. The Bible tells us that all those things work together. Can you imagine the worst parts of your life work together with the goodness of God and who He is? Last thing, John 9, 2, 3. His disciples asked Him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man, which is a blind man, or, or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. There's a destiny that God can reveal his glory in a blind man.
sometimes we, we have these things that happen to our life because in time God will reveal his glory in the things that are happening in your life bad things good things the Lord has plans for your life and if you're going through something there's hope there's hope this morning there's hope this morning I'm telling you man Nat there's hope this morning I'm telling, I'm telling you what, what Christian's going through God I'm confident I'm confident that Yeshua says who he is he's going to do it in your son you can take that to the bank and cash it too God is that good if you're, and if somebody's going through here something you need prayer man I encourage you everybody stand up let's all stand up let's, let's, God, God deserves the glory man God has amazing plans for your life. This is a good Sunday, people. We're a Sunday fun. This is a good Sunday. This is a God day. This is a God day. You know, I know little Rudy, I knew little Rudy thought this Sunday was good because Donda dropped. Kanye came finally dropped his album. Like, things are happening. Good things are set in order. God has good plans for you. Amen. Plans that are for you to prosper, for you to be blessed. Because it's everything's according to his riches, to his purpose, to his will, amen. And if you need prayer in your life, I want to encourage you, brother and sister, come on up. We will pray for you. I'll pray for you. Come on up. We got we got an amazing pastoral team. We'll pray for you. Because you're not gonna leave this place sick. I'm telling you right now. If you're sick in this body, you won't leave this place sick. God will hear you. If you if you got if you need needs to that need to be met, God will meet those needs. Because he is not a liar. He's not the one to be mocked. The Bible says he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. If you need needs, you need needs. The Bible says that he is Jehovah Rapha, that Lord that heals. If you're going through mental problems, like mental uh, uh, battles, I'm telling you, depression, anxiety, all these things. The Bible says that he is Jehovah Nishi. He is the banner of victory that we wave in our battles. God is for you. God is for you.